Hi everyone and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey and in this video we're going to be taking a look at sequences and specifically how we can use sequences to create a very powerful transition system. You can see this is the, going to be the project that we're building. We have a knight that can move around and when he gets over to this black hole we're going to transition and it's a simple fade to black and then appear in a next room. And now there's almost no coding involved and you can add on to this system as much as you want. So let's roll the intro and let's get right into the coding. So we have in front of us a default project here. You can download this from the description and you can see that we have a few objects. We have a player. All we have is a simple step event, which moves our guy around. We have an object transition and you can see that's completely empty. And we also have an object zone and this one is empty as well. And the only thing I wanted to point out is in our room, you can see how everything is set up. We have our object and then our zone, which is our trigger. We have a tile set and nothing else. And then in room number two, we just have the uh, instances, which is our player to let the guy walk around. Now this is going to be about sequences. So let's go ahead and create a sequence. So I'll come down to sequences. I'll say create, and I'm gonna name this sequence SQE, and then I'll say transition and fade. Now, one thing I want to point out with the sequence here is we have a canvas. It's 1366 by 768. If you know how to change this, I've not found out how to change this yet. Please leave it in the description below as I would love to know if you can change that. However, there's one thing I want to point out with the sequence. Right now, the sequence canvas is a lot bigger than our actual room. So if I take these sprites and I add in the sprite here in the corner and this corner and then finally the two bottom corners, if I go into my room after I've saved this, I'll go into room one and I'll just drag and drop this sequence in to let GameMaker create the asset layer for me. If I zoom out, you'll see that this sequence is a lot bigger than my room. And that's because it's going based off of this sequence canvas here. So what that means is we need to make this canvas the size of our room, which is 480 by 360. Luckily, GameMaker has these rulers here. So what we can do is we can drag a ruler down and you can see that it will snap to the top line. So the top line is 384. So that means that we'll have to load up our calculator. We'll do 384 minus the height of our room, which is 360, which means I need to put a new line at 24. So I'll come down here and zoom in a little bit, drag from my ruler until I get to the 24 pixels. Now we have to do the same with the width. So we come over, you can see that's 683. So once we take 683, minus 480 and that will give us a 203 so we come in and drag the ruler until we get 203 but now what we're left with is our little room here so if i come over and i drag these squares into our room i mean it's going to be off because i'm just eyeing everything but if i save it and go back to my room you can see that it's pretty much bang on the only thing is we have all this white space over here and the reason we have all that white space is because this little guy right here this you want to treat this as kind of the anchor point or the origin of this sequence so this is going to be zero zero what i like to do is i like to take this origin point and i'm going to place it all the way in the top left so now i know the top left for me is going to be zero zero if i look at my room again you can see it shrunk down and it fits pretty much perfectly in the room that one's a little off just because of where i dragged it so i'm going to go ahead and delete this selected layer here because we don't need it and go back into our transition so everything is set up. Now we just have to do the actual transition. I'll close my room so I have more room to work with. And I'm gonna delete the extra squares that we don't need. Now this is gonna be a fade transition and it's okay if it's over, over the rulers. We don't really need to be directly on for this. Now we're gonna have a black square that covers the entire room and I want this to last for 60 frames. So I'm gonna drag this guy all the way over here. So that means that this black square is gonna last for 60 frames on the screen. Now you want to make sure that we have our automatically record changes turned on. And once they are turned on, we can drill down in here and we can add a new, a new key and we want to add color multiply. Now I'll click this white icon and change the alpha down to zero. You can see that everything has now faded. I'm going to go all the way over to 60 by dragging on the timeline here. And then I'm going to click on my square, click on the color again and change it to 255. Now, if I go on the timeline, you should be able to see it kind of fade in and fade out. The last thing we want to do is you can either do it on frame 60 or frame 59, and we're going to broadcast a message. We're going to broadcast trans transition 
end. What that's going to do is it's going to tell us that the sequence has ended, such as this transition, and it's going to move on to the next room. So if we close everything, we're pretty much all set up here. In the object zone, I want to record two variables. I want to record what sequence we're going to use and then what room we're going to go to next. So that means I'm going to add in two variables and I'm going to call one transition. And I'm also going to say the other one is going to be next underscore room. Now, instead of these being real numbers, we're going to set them both to an asset. And for the transition, I'm going to click on this gear. Let me close this window here. I will click on the gear and I will say that you can only use sequences. And for this guy, the next room, you can only use rooms. I'm going to set their default to none. Now that we have these, I want to make sure I transfer these variables into the transition system. So we will click on variable definitions underneath the object transition, add the two variables in, and I'm going to name them the same. So I'll have transition and then next room and just do the exact same thing as we had. They're both assets. One can use sequences. The other one can use rooms and the default for them is none and none. So what we've done here is we've made it so our object zone, if we load up our room and we come over to our zone, we double click and we click on variables. We can now tell it what transition to use by clicking the edit button and then this drop down. And we can say, use the fade transition. And then we can say, what room do we want to go to next? So we'll click the drop down and go to room number two. And we're almost done here. If we go back to the work workspace and we go to the object zone, we need to have this trigger in order to create our object transition. To do that, we'll add an event and we'll go to collision objects and then transition only when the player collides with the zone. So once the player collides with the zone, we need to create an object transition. So we will use the instance create depth and we're using create depth here. So we don't have to create any new layers. We don't really care about this object because it's going to be hidden. So we'll create it at the X and Y location of the zone the same depth and then obviously we're going to create the object transition and once we're done with everything we can destroy our own instance so we will destroy the zone now like i said we needed to pass in a couple variables to this object transition so i'm going to store the variable that get, or sorry the instance that gets created here into a variable called instance now this may seem a little bit weird but we're going to take this transition in this next room from the object zone and we're going to transfer it into this particular instance here so this means i could say instance dot transition equals transition and then instance dot next room equals next room now remember that when we don't have anything in front of it we are referring to the object that we are currently on so in our case the object zone and when we have instance dot in front of this we are referring to the instance that we created called object transition so all we've done here is we've created the transition object and we've transferred the variables from the transition and next room into this object here. Now, the only other thing we need to do is we need to tell this instance to wait one frame before playing a transition or playing the sequence. It's just how GameMaker is handling sequence in this case. So I could say with the instance that we created, I want to set an alarm and I'll set alarm zero for one frame and then I'll just end it. So that means that we need to go into object transition and we need an event called alarm zero. And in here, this is where we want to start playing that certain sequence. To play the sequence, we need a new layer. We need to get the sequence. We need to create the sequence layer or add it. And then we need to tell it to play. So we can use a new layer equals layer underscore create. And the depth, let me show my helper text here. It creates a depth and a name. So I'll just use minus 100. And you may have to play with that number depending on what layers are in your actual game. And I'm going to call this one sequence transition as the layer name. Now we need to get the actual sequence that we want to play. So we can do this with another function called sequence underscore get. I'm just going to copy this word so I don't have to keep typing it. And I want to get whatever sequence was passed into the transition variable here. Next, we need to add the sequence into that layer. So we could say layer sequence equals layer underscore sequence underscore create. And this takes the layer ID, which is the new layer variable, then the X and Y coordinates, and we can get away with 0.0, .0 .0 because we move that origin in the top left. So I know that when I place it in my room, it expects everything to be in the top left. 
And then we need to paste in the sequence ID, which is, uh, let me expand this a little bit more, which is this guy right here, which we got for using the sequence get variable. The final thing we need to do is we need to tell the sequence to actually play. And we can do that with layer sequence play. And we're going to tell it to play this particular sequence here. Okay, so if this is all done and we hit F5, when I go over here, our transition should play. However, we're not switching over to the room because we are not listening for that broadcast message. So let's close our game and add a new event we can find under other, and then we want broadcast message. So the way that a broadcast works is it needs the type and then the actual message. So we can get the type by looking in an array called event <laughs> event data, and then we want to look for the event underscore type, which will give us the actual type of this broadcast message. And then we also need the message itself. So this is what the uh, broadcast message is actually saying. Once again, we'll find that in event data, and you can just find it underneath message. Now you'll find this in the documentation for Game Maker Studio 2.3. So we have an array that holds an event type and the message. And then what we need to do is we just need to check the type and then we need to do something with a specific message. So we can say if the type is equal to sequence event with a space, then we know that we can come into this array and we can either do a bunch of if statements or we can just do a switch statement based on the message. When we created our sequence, we had the broadcast message of transition end. So we're going to look for that actual message. So we'll say case transition end. So that means that if the message equals transition end, well, all we want to do is say room underscore go to, and we want to go to the next underscore room, which is the variable that we created here. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's hit F5, let our game load up, and let's go over here and see if we transition. And now we load up into the next room. One thing I want to talk about is how powerful this can be. Watch how simple it is to create a new transition. We can come in here and we can duplicate this sequence and let's just call this slide. Now, if we come in here, the one thing you might notice right off the bat is our guides are gone. So hopefully Game Maker will fix that or Yo-Yo Studios, but not a big deal. We can eyeball this. We can delete that bring in our square here and on frame number zero, I'm just gonna make sure this is bigger. I'm gonna want it to go all the way to the end of 60. So make sure we have our automatic uh, changes turned on. And what we're gonna do is go all the way down to 60 here and I'm just gonna scale this so it goes halfway across the screen. So we should end up with something like this. Now that means that I can go into my room, I can double click on my zone, I can go to variables and I can pull down this drop down, go to sequences and choose the slide sequence. Now I can save everything and hit F5. And just like that, we should create it a new transition. And we're done. Our transitions are now complete. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the transition system using sequences from GameMaker 2.3. A shout out to my Patreon supporters in no particular order. Paul, Ashby, Victor, Kylie, Jesus, Jujube84, Manuel, Ville, Edward, and Annie. This video's free game is 19xx. Take a walk through the journey of time and playing old school arcade games. Thanks for watching.